Hi, class. <clears throat> How are you guys doing on this Monday? Ooh, sorry the weekend's over and school's back in session. Oh my gosh. Um, so starting with today, I know last week we talked about migration and we talked about traveling. The week before that, we talked about Earth and how we could best help Earth. And then the week before that, we talked about um, different women leaders in our past and in our present and what they have done to help uh, their society um, or their cities or their states or their countries. So um, there was a connecting theme with all of our units in the past three weeks. A connecting theme I saw was the idea of helping. And so that's why today our essential question is why should we help one another? Why should we help another? The skill that we're gonna be working on is inference, and we're also going to be working on our story arc or summarizing a story. So we're first gonna start off with remembering this essential question while we're reading. So why should we help one another? I'm gonna be reading a fictional story today. It's called, uh, Soraya's, uh, Supriya's Bull, sorry, Supriya's Bull. It is a ancient folktale. So with folktales, um, you really learn a moral or a lesson at the end of the story. So that's what we're gonna be working on today is uh, trying to figure out what that lesson is. Also um, summarizing your story. So I'm gonna begin. It's right over here. You can kind of read with me if you'd like to. Hard times starve people's spirits, as well as their bodies. So it was once when the Buddha lived and famine struck the land, famine struck the land. The rains failed and the heat of the sun withered the harvest in the field. Ooh, I see there might be a word that might be a little bit confusing for y'all. It says the rains failed and the heat of the sun withered the harvest in the field. The word I'm looking at that might be a little bit confusing or you might have not heard it before is the sun withered the harvest in the field. So looking at that word withered, you can use our context clues or the word surrounding withered to try and make an inference of what withered means. Well, if it says the rains are failing Okay, and the sun is withering a harvest. Does that mean maybe growing the harvest? Well, if we look before, it said that there was fam uh, famine in the land. Famine is when there's like hunger in the land. And it says right there, there was starving in the land. Right here, it says starving people's spirits as well as their bodies. So these people are very starved. So we're thinking, oh, the sun must be doing something bad to their crops. It's withering it. It's almost killing their crops or killing their harvest. All around, the cries of pain and hunger could be heard. So you can also use the context clues right here. The cries of pain and hunger could be heard. If the sun was helping the crops, then um, there wouldn't be hunger. <laughs> but since it's killing them, there's a lot of hunger right now. In the midst of this misery, some people grew greedy and selfish. The Buddha's followers came to him, bringing stories of sadness and shame. I'm wondering right here, what sort of story is really bringing to him of shame? What exactly is that feeling of shame? And how can we put that feeling of shame into a certain story that the Buddha heard? One merchant in town stabbed another, said one, and all for a bag of grain. I heard of a woman who sold her last goat to buy some flour. On her way home, she was attacked by robbers, and the flour was stolen, said another. Saddest of all, Lord Buddha, said a third, are the stories of children dying of hunger on the poor side of town, because the wealthy have hoarded all the grain and milk and sugar. There's an interesting word right here. Uh, hoarded. They've hoarded all of the grain and milk and sugar. I'm wondering, what do you guys think that means? People hoarding 
all of the grain, milk, and sugar. Well, I can use my context clues once again. It says the stories of children dying of hunger. So if a person is dying of hunger, we can make that context clues of why. Why might they be dying of hunger? Well, the word surrounding it, it says that the wealthy are hoarding. Wealthy are hoarding food. So does that mean that they're sharing the food? No. If the wealthy were sharing the food, then our children wouldn't be dying of hunger. I think hoarding means that they are stockpiling it or they are keeping it all to themselves. So then that has an impact on these kids, these kids who are poor. They're not being able to get any food and then they're almost dying of that hunger. So Buddha says, call the people together, said the Buddha. Let us see what we can do to help those who cannot help themselves. I think this right here, a very powerful line. Let us see what we can do to help uh, those. Because sometimes people can't help themselves, as it says right here, they, who cannot help themselves. Sometimes people need that lending hand and they're not getting it from anyone else. So sometimes we have to be that person to help them out. So the Buddhist followers called a big meeting. Hundreds of people came, rich and poor, well-fed and starving, out of respect for the Buddha. They came to hear his words. The Buddha said, citizens of this fair land, surely there's enough food in the storehouses of the wealthy to feed everyone. If the rich share what they have in the lean season, then you will all survive to enjoy the benefits of the next good harvest. Hmm. So I see right here, I notice that the Buddha, he's asking everyone to share especially the rich. He's asking the rich, you must have some food um, hoarded up. Could you please share that food? I'm wondering now how people are going to react by the Buddha's request. His request was for basically just to share, to give out the food that you have. The poor and the hungry looked hopeful at the Buddha's words, but the rich people grumbled. So here we have the Buddha and here's this crowd of people. My granary is empty, lied one. The poor are lazy, let them work for me. Then they can use the money to buy the food I have stored, said another. There are too many people, said a third. Let them go somewhere else. What I'm wondering right now, is how are these different comments from these three people, how are they going to affect others from sharing? Are they gonna make others not want to share? What's going to happen to these poor and these starving people because of what these people, these rich people are saying? I'm wondering that too. The Buddha side, when his eyes, I fell upon the people with hearts of stone. Is there no one here, he said finally, who will take on the job of helping to feed the poor and homeless in these hard times? I feel for the Buddha. I'm wondering who is going to help? Who is going to stand up and be a leader in these times? Let's see. Let's see if someone's going to choose to stand up. There was silence. Then a small girl piped up. I will, Lord Buddha. Out of the crowd stepped a girl, no more than six or seven years old. She was a merchant's child, dressed in fine silk. Flowers were braided in her hair. My name is Supriya, said the girl, and I have a bowl to fill with food for the hungry. When can I begin? This really... That part really shocked me that out of all the people there, it was a young girl who stood up to help the hungry. And she's wondering right away, how can I help? 
where should I begin? And she's asking the food. And that really shows initiative and leadership. She really wants to help the um, society and the starving in her community. She wants to begin it right away. That's what I meant by initiative. That's when we want to begin something right away. The Buddha smiled. Small child, he said, your heart is filled with love. But how will you do this alone? Supriya replied, not alone, Lord Buddha, but with your help. I'll take the bowl from house to house and ask for food for the poor. I will not be refused. I know it. This line right here, I will not be refused. I know it. I wonder what sort of inferences we can make from that line. How is this girl, Supriya, feeling? Looking at this child with her earnest face and shining eyes, even the most selfish among those present, present grew ashamed. So this is showing that this one girl had a really big impact. She made other people, once she stood up, she made other people feel selfish and feel ashamed for not coming to help earlier. They then replied by saying, I have a little grain in my storehouse mumbled one. I have some pickled mango from summer's harvest, said another. My father was poor once. I'm ashamed to have forgotten, muttered a third. So wow, I see a big effect this uh, little girl is having. She's changing people's minds and changing their words and probably changing their actions. Let's see if uh, the community just does change their actions. Then Supriya took her bowl. And every day she went from house to house in the rich part of town. Wherever she went, little by little, the bowl got filled. That's really exciting to hear. So here you see Supriya with her little bowl. Um, she has multiple bowls over here. They're all being filled with food. So others are helping her. She's going door by door to try to get these uh, bowls filled. Sometimes an old grandma would fill it with rice. Sometimes children would give up their sweets for the day. Often others would join Supriya with their bulbs and help her take the food to the people who needed it. And sometimes it is said when Supriya was tired of walking, she would rest in the shade of the uh, banyan tree. When she woke, she would find the bowl had magically filled itself. Now said Supriya, the hungry will eat and the people of this town will take care of each other. And so they did. So I'm wondering, what was the impact of Supriya's actions and her words? How was she able to make change in her community? Why? Why did she want to make that change? Why did she want to help others? Our essential question, why should we help others? What I'd like you guys to do now, um, after this video, is I'd like you to make a story arc where you tell me about the intro, what happened in the very beginning, what characters were introduced, so the characters and the setting, where was the story taking place, who were some of the main characters, then there was a problem that occurred or an incident, so a problem there's something uh, negative that happens. It's a conflict. Something that people have to figure out. They don't want a problem to continually occur or to be continuous. So after our problem, we had a climax. Our climax is our turning point. So when, when we are about to solve the problem, we have not solved the problem fully but we are very close to solving it. It's at your turning point. It's normally a very suspenseful part or a part that has a lot of emotion as well. And then at the end of the story, we have a resolution. The resolution, actually, if you look closely, it has the word solution in it. When you think of a solution, that's an answer. A solution is an answer to a problem. So they are sol solving the problem. Or they are answering the problem. How can they best uh, 
figure out how to make change in this story. So that's what you're going to be doing after this. Um, read aloud is you're going to be making a story arc and then you are going to be completing your exit ticket. And then you're going to be doing a little written reflection about helping on No Red Ink. You're going to think, you're going to brainstorm different things that you would like to change in our world and pick one and tell me about why you want to change that. Why is it so important to you? Thank you guys. Uh, I hope you have a great Monday and happy learning. Bye.